I think we start with the fact that you still have to either file your tax return or file an extension of time related to your tax return. So I think there's some misconceptions out there related to, oh, wait a minute, I don't have to file my tax return for another 90 days. Not true. What the rule is going to be is you don't have to pay your taxes, which would normally be due on April 15th for 90 days, which takes us out to July 15th. Now, there are two exceptions to that. There is a cutoff for individuals, and that's per tax return, of $1 million. So if you owe more than $1 million, you're going to have to make that payment over $1 million by April 15th. For corporations, the cutoff is $10 million. So that, that's right now where we stand. Dan, um, quick follow-up on that and what the government has done. Um, there are some members of Congress, I believe, including Senator Rand Paul, who have said that the government should push back the filing date as well. Do you think that's the right thing to do? Because in that case, then people also wouldn't get their return checks, uh, refund checks, I should say, mailed to them. So if we push back the April 15th due date for actually filing the tax return, there's really no harm because if you're owed a refund, by all means, you should be doing everything that you can to file your tax return before April 15th is if possible, because the whole goal here is for people to be able to hold on to as much money as they possibly can. So most people who are going to not file or would consider not filing by April 15th are more than likely people who are going to owe tax anyway. So what that really would do is take some pressure off of tax preparers like myself. Hey, Dan, it's Adam. Good to see you. I was curious, looking really far ahead, and it, a friend said it is a joke, but it makes sense. With all of us working from home, we need to keep track of the space we have because you can deduct this from this year's tax bill that will be due next year, won't we? Or, I mean, isn't that how this is going to play out? Uh, are you suggesting a uh, home office deduction? Absolutely. Half the country, if not all the country, is going to be working from home. Why wouldn't people take advantage of that? Well, the home office deduction basically had disappeared with the new tax law. But you bring up an interesting point now. If people are forced to work at home, which essentially creates a, a another office of your company, that, that's an interesting point to take advantage of. Now, we also have to say, what are the costs that are related to setting up your computer in a room? And there's all kinds of rules, Adam, related to how that home office needs to be set up. So, oh, Dan, I'm also curious in that case, does it matter if you are an employee of a company or if you are self-employed if you're trying to claim a home office deduction? So if you are self-employed and your only office is in your home, which there are a lot of people who have a situation like that, that is not a home office deduction as we were used to knowing prior to the uh, Trump tax changes where you actually were able to deduct the cost of having an office in your house. If you have an office in your house and that is the only office that you have, meaning you don't have the ability working for someone else where you do have an office, let's say, that deduction is gone. But if you are self-employed, your office is in your house, you can take that on what's called your Schedule C, which is the, the outline of your personal business activity. Dan Geltrude, thank you, as always, for explaining these various tax concepts to us. Really appreciate your time. Hope you are well.